and you wanted to go over the next assignment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, so. First. And know. the lab today is for setting you guys up for uh, for the next assignment. I also wanted to talk about what the expectations were for Wednesday. Um, we can uh, do do uh, maybe do that that first actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, Wednesday, uh, you guys are giving about five five minute ish presentations. If it's less than that, great. Um, but five yeah. minutes max. And the the expectation really here is to show the journey, what your goal was, what challenges uh, that you faced um probably with data <laughs> like with your your data collection um uh and showing the the video showing the final results of the work um but it's it's very much a, a show and tell if 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 you you know it's 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 about just getting experience uh talking about your work in in front of uh in front of people and um uh, but it doesn't have to be a formal presentation. So if if you're feeling really stressed about making slides and stuff, it's it's okay if you don't. Um, it, it'd be nice if you like presented a coherent presentation, but whatever that looks like. Um, so uh, don't don't let this part of the uh, of the project uh, be an especial stress point. Uh, doing the video was supposed to bootstrap you with having materials already to kind of show for for Wednesday. Um, that was, that was it. That was it about Wednesday. So you want to talk about, uh, any questions about, uh, about that? And we'll be in, we'll be in person again on Wednesday. Okay. Okay, Manoj, uh, let's talk about homework two. Uh, all right. Let me share my screen. Uh, going to eat my yogurt while you're talking. All right. So, uh, there again, like there's a slight modification to the syllabus that uh, Brian suggested that we should do. Uh, if you look at the syllabus now, uh, okay. uh, hold on. Mm, yeah, so to be releasing uh, the H2 today on 30th, and it's the milestone one, similar to your previous assignment, this has like two milestones, and the milestone one is due on 16th of October. Uh, Earlier it was due on 9th, we shifted it to 16th. And along with that, uh, I don't know if you guys have noticed, like every time you guys have a submission, there is a lab session so that you don't have a reading. So similar to that, uh, we'll have our next lab session on 16th, as opposed to, I don't know, it was sometime earlier, like there, this has changed. <laughs> This fall fall okay. break makes it a little hard to, um, to yeah. like ide ideally it would be that day, you know? Yeah, right? yeah. It's uh so the final and then the final like h2 is due on like 28th so you have this month to work on like your second assignment essentially uh all right now going back to the assignment itself uh so now if you go to home tab and like scroll down to all of these there's a new like module called uh, assignment h2 and labs this is where you will get all the information for your next assignment uh all right so the the next assignment is at uh, is building a generative ai app uh it can't get like more state of the art than this like trust me like i've seen numerous job posts on uh using these libraries precisely to build like gen ai apps so like this is this is it uh and also there is no restriction in terms of like what kind of models you use because we are not using ML5 at all. Uh, we are using something called a tagging face, which I will introduce in a bit, uh, which gives you like an ocean of models. Like seriously, like there are there are too many to choose from. <laughs> it's it's far different than using ML5, which is like a couple. This is hundreds and hundreds. I mean, I don't know thousands. I, I haven't. Yeah, yeah, kept, yeah. right. Ocean. But like more more than you'll be able to even look through and, and browse through. Yeah, so anything that you can think of goes because there is almost like there's almost a model that can do that you're thinking of. The only like requirement, however, is that like uh, you use one model, at least one, like you can use how many other models you want from Hugging Face, but at least one model from Hugging Face and one LLM model from OpenAI. Uh, 
again one llm model for sure like so you need to have like two models at the very minimum one from hugging face whatever model you choose to do and the other one from the open ai uh like sort of system uh yeah and then the rest of the assignment is like having building this in a flask like sort of framework so that you have a front end and a back end and you're free to integrate like any sort of uh, ml5 component that you want like for example for whatever reason if you decide to have a you know hand pose model from ml5 that you want to control your uh, sketch which is internally driven by a hugging face model and uh, open ai llm you can do that because with Flask you can pretty much do all of that uh, but yeah that's that's any question so far is it is it clear what the assignment is i will show you an example of what this looks like also in a bit all right uh, yeah i'm not sure it's going to be super clear because they don't know what hugging face necessarily is yet <laughs> yes you know uh, yeah, yeah yeah that makes sense Oh, also one like minor change as opposed to your uh, previous like assignment is that we will have a demo video even for this like milestone as opposed to having a demo video only for milestone two because this is a bit more complex uh, than your previous assignment. All right, let's go into one library at a time. Uh, hugging face. So are we moving into the demo like the lab or are you uh, still explaining the homework? still explaining the homework okay. but i can i can show okay hold on so before i because i will cover what all of those things are in the lab so let me just show you what an app with all of these components look like uh i showed this briefly in a previous class also i'm waiting for my flask to run <sighs> all right so this is an app that if it opens up uh is built on it's built using flask it has an about page like right now it's just a placeholder text but this is where i would imagine like you'll give your you know artistic statement and all of those like ways of interacting and so on and so forth and in this what is happening is that i don't have to do it like the way i'm doing it i'm just giving you an example is uh, if I upload an image, like for example, I choose any image I had a bunch of like test pics. Uh, like this is a kid and a dog and like a person like walking the kid right outside my house. Uh, so what this does is that if I upload an image, it takes a bit of time. Uh, it sends this image to the hugging face model, which essentially converts that into a caption. All right, just yeah, it converts that into a caption there. A uh, woman walking a small child in a wagon with a dog. Now the LLM takes this caption as a prompt and generates a small story based on that prompt. Uh, as you can imagine, like it is, it generates a story as if like this image that you see is like one page in the in the entire like story. And on the front end, so this is the story that it generates. And on the front end part, I've used a library called p5 dot speech which converts this text into speech. So, oh damn, I should have, hold on. Now you will be able to hear because I hadn't like enabled sound here. On a sunny afternoon, Clara pulled her little boy, Max, in a bright red wagon, while their golden retriever, Buddy, trotted alongside. Max giggled, pointing at the fluffy clouds, imagining them as castles in the sky. All right, you get the idea. Uh, and you can also immediately see that it is thinking the dog is a golden retriever because the caption didn't mention what kind of dog it was. Uh, but anyway, like this is one of the use cases in which like we're using three different models. I will just show briefly show the code for this also. I will walk you guys through on how to build this. Don't worry if this doesn't make sense. But uh, so essentially, okay, forget it. Forget the code. I will walk you guys through in a bit. But it's, uh, like, this is a pretty cool demo. I'm just gonna give you props here. Like <laughs> this, this is great. Like this is close to a submission for the homework. You know what I mean? Like yes, yeah. I mean, I could, I couldn't think of a simpler idea. Even this was from a YouTube video that I was watching. I'm like, I, I don't know what like nonsense example I can give. Uh, 
but it has all the components here in terms of uh, what the assignment expects and so on and so forth. Uh, like even if you're going off of this, you can imagine like having a P5 like sort of interaction where I like hover my mouse and like the text does something uh, or even I do this and the image does something. So like everything is up for grabs here in this assignment and you can imagine whatever literally and build it. Uh, all right, so another component of like this is like it is important to have an LM model like that that I can't stress more because your milestone two depends heavily on that. We will be using another library called line chain. What, uh, what was that? It's important to have a what model? An LLM from OpenAI. LLM, okay. Yeah. It's also uh, a requirement of the assignment, so it. Yes, helps. it is. Yeah. It is absolutely <laughs> like there is no like not having an LLM uh, as opposed to your previous assignment where we were. Uh, supposed to think of a holistic app for milestone two and then map it back to milestone one. In this, you will build an entire app in milestone one itself. And in milestone two, we are enhancing the functionality of what the app does uh, using Langchain. I don't have a demo to show, but like, trust me, it will. It doesn't require you to think of a new idea. It is just adding like more features to what you already have. Uh, so it's simpler in like generating a generation of idea in that like sort of sense. Now that you've seen this, any questions on what the assignment is? All right. I'll assume no. And let's get into the lab part of it. Uh, so this is similar to homework one with different technologies. Yeah. It's a very similar ask. Um, we're just introducing you to what we used in milestone one wasn't like you're not you're not going to use teachable like teachable machine is an environment really for it's a pedagogical environment um i don't know how often people use it for like making models for like products um do they i have no clue like but uh, unless yeah, it's I mean, like some small scale model like yeah, yeah yeah um where we're pivoting to here are, are the heavier libraries that Manoj was talking about a month ago. Um, <clears throat> this, like, as as you said, this is about as state of the art as it can get. There are jobs that you can get using these APIs. You can't get a job in Teachable Machine. I think that that would be actually is a really, really obvious difference. Um, my computer is trying to force me to reboot. So if I happen to be gone, that's just what happened. Oh, wow. You're yeah. recording this. <laughs> oh, no. Well, I think it stays. I think it'll stay recording. Well, right. if That's if I do get booted, just just you just hit record. I guess. All right. Yeah. Uh, okay. You're gonna switch over to hugging face now. Yes. Uh, so the bunch of libraries. The the first one, like, how many of us are familiar with hugging face or have like previously used hugging face? Uh, here in the class. I know Chengzi might have. Uh, Chengzi is using it, but like apart from her, anyone else? I'm familiar with Hugging Face, but I haven't really like actually. I think I attempted to use a model once just for okay. the fun of it, but didn't really do anything serious with it. No, all right. Does, does Hugging Face have Llama in it? Yes, it has like Llama. It has like all. Oh, but, I didn't know that. <laughs> it has Llama. Uh, so, all right. So, if you're not familiar with Hugging Face, Hugging Face is like a, you can think of this like a GitHub repo of all like generative AI models. Uh, and it's it literally is like a repo where you can push your model or download like other people model. Uh, you can run the model using their API or like run the model like downloading on your local computer and so on and so forth. If you haven't created the account on Hugging Face, please do so because we'll need it for today's like sort of lab. Uh, but anyway, so Hugging, Hugging Face generally has like three components, major ones. Like one is the models that you click on models. Uh, there, uh, as you can see that we have a host of like models that you can like think of. Uh, and if you really want to see like what all tasks uh, Hugging Face is capable of here, uh, each one of these like tile has like a bunch of like models on the background that you can like choose, pick and choose and like do whatever you want to. Uh, 
and like that's like the model part and then like the second like part that you have in hugging face is called data sets where essentially like these are not models but these are like data sets that people have uploaded most of them might be clean some of them might not be uh but you can use this like data set to train your own like machine learning model if you want to not a part of the assignment but like just giving an intro on what data sets are uh, apart from that you also have something called a spaces which is where you can interactively like play around with any of these like models. For example, I don't know if I can expression and that's that caught my attention. Okay. Okay. So the, as if I upload an image, it apparently changes a bunch of like stuff uh, based on rotate left, rotate right and all of that. I won't do it. My laptop is going to crash, but like get the idea. You can play around with the model. Uh, directly on the web interface using spaces. You can even host your models uh, or your apps uh, on spaces as well. So that like, for example, I could have hosted my app that I showed you the, on hugging like face spaces and you could have interacted there as well. Uh, but yeah, the, those are the like three main components that are there in hugging face. You have a host of models. You have a host of data sets and you have a place where you can interact with the Gen AI models that people have created. Any questions so far? All right. Uh, so on Hugging Face, if you go to like once you've done your uh, profile creation and so on and so forth, mm, where, mm, settings, where is the API token, access tokens? All right. Uh, so if you go to your profile and then settings, and then here, if you see like come down to access tokens, you'll have to create one uh, and copy like whatever value comes in here. Just make sure you copy whatever the key is, because once you have, once that key, you don't copy that key, that key is gone. I can't like access that value even if I want to right now. So whenever you create the key, just copy that API key there. It's free. Uh, so just get that information then. Uh, apart from that, uh, covered this. Oh yeah, this is the other library that we are using. Uh, if you guys are not familiar with this, this is uh, OpenAI ChatGPT essentially, but like this is the developer version of it. This is called uh, the platform.openai.com. Uh, again, the links for all of this is in the website on the assignment like sort of uh, document. What there is something called as playground, which most of you might have seen. This is another way of interacting with chat like model chat GPT also, but it gives more control on how you're interacting with this model. Uh, in system instruction, you can like give like behave like I don't know, behave like a kid. Uh, And I say, uh, I, I don't know, like, what, what, can you think of uh, any question that I can ask in <laughs> ChatGPT? I am really blanking out. Uh, a question that you can, or a prompt? Or a prompt, yeah. Like, I have given behave like a five year old kid in system instruction, and like, I don't know. No. I mean, if I mean, do you just want it to do just anything? Anything. Or, okay. Um, how about that? It acts like a used car salesman trying to sell us a car. Okay. Uh, uh, Behave like you, a uh, like a used an unscrupulous. Car. I, I don't think you even <laughs> need to say that. I don't even think you need to say unscrupulous. I think you'll just yeah. do it. Uh, even uh, spelled like, uh, yeah, like a used car salesman and try and, and try to sell me a car. Try. A car. All right. So I've already given like behave like a five year old on top of that. I've given this like, oh, perfect. Uh, so oh, as you can see. <laughs> This uh, now chat GPT is behaving like a five year old who's trying to sell me a car, which is like extremely weird. Uh, it even has a cup holder for your juice box. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you get the idea? 
like the in system instruction essentially is the place where you can put like whatever instruction or like in however more detailed you want. We will go into more details about this in for milestone two, like not right now. Like first in system instruction, we just like give like well, what the LLM needs to respond like, and then it just responds like that. On the right, I'm hopeful that you are familiar with most of these like what sliders are from our transformers like sort of discussion. Mm, one week ago, uh, temperature essentially, if you remember, is the log probability distribution that happens at the very end of the transformer. And like temperature, higher temperature, uh, it leads to a flatter like sort of curve, which essentially means that you get like more random choice. And uh, lower temperature gives you a more pointy curve, and you get like precise like sort of response. Max token is like the amount of like uh, tokens that. ChatGPT can generate. Uh, top P is like it just controls like the highest. Right, what does like, that mean? Operation. What does that mean? Does that mean in a single utterance? In a single utterance. Like, yeah. So that's the size of the responses. Yes. Yeah, that's the max size of the response, uh, and that's like you can set it to whatever you want uh, based on what model you're trying to use. Uh, but two zero four eight is like the standard. Uh, Frequency penalty is like penalizing chat GPT for using like words frequently uh, within like sort of text. So it will try and not use same words again and again. Uh, I don't know what presence penalty is. You can look into it. Uh, not important. Honestly. Whether or not they exist, it's novelty. Ah, uh, really? So it's like, yeah. Uh, okay. So, uh, yeah. I'm, so it I'm, encourages I'm, novelty. Okay. So yes, so you can play around with this and these are the parameters that you can set when you're calling this model also. So in the, you, you have playgrounds to play around with like whatever you want. Uh, since we are not giving you the login for this, uh, you might have seen, so what I did was, because this is a paid service and Brian got us like funds for using this for the class. Uh, I've created like one project for each of you guys, uh, like one name for each person in the class. And I have uh, assigned an API, I've created an API key and you can access that API key. If you go to the modules here, this is a small quiz. Oh, where is it? There, yeah. This is a small quiz, uh, which essentially, I, it gives information about what API is. Yeah, it will give you this like yeah, it will give you information like what an API key is. Uh, that we have hundred dollars in total for the account, which means like seven dollars per student and so on and so forth. So if you enter your GT ID, uh, which is really your... hard to use, I just want to throw out like seven dollars will be hard to use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a lot of so money. Don't shoot for it. Like, yes. <laughs> like yeah. don't just let your computer just run API calls all night for no reason or whatever. Yeah, but this should be this is a bountiful amount for us to to experiment with for sure like yeah. for sure like we don't need more than that at all uh so if you enter your gt id and submit you should be able to see your unique like sort of api key uh i will not show you <laughs> mine but uh you get the idea it will say like hi you are followed by your name and then your api key is like whatever your api key is. that's how i set it up uh if you if your name is mismatched, please come to me and let me know that it's not your API key so that I can give you your API key. All right. It shouldn't happen that way, by the way. I've tested it. Uh, anyway, any questions so far? Like, how do you get like the Hugging Face API key and the uh, OpenAI API key so far before I move into the coding part? All right. So I assume everything is clear. Uh, I'm guessing some folks are just, are clicking through and, and doing it right now. All right. <laughs> uh, so as opposed to the Hugging Face API that you will see only once, your quiz will stay. Uh, if you had done it through the website, you would see you see it only once, but like the quiz will stay, so you can copy paste it whenever you'd like. Uh, all right. Now let's just go to the coding. See, this is why I hold like online lab sessions so i've sent you a folder which is like the base like sort of flask app 
that we need. It's nothing fancy. It's everything that we looked at from last class. I'll copy the same code here as well. Hold on. template. Just make sure you download it and uh, put it in the right like sort of folder that you have. Right. Anyway, uh, I've just pushed this code to the GitHub repo. All right. So uh, before I like start coding, uh or hold on let, let me just like start coding itself so the in app.py in the template that i provided uh we already have like this much setup in which like i have the base app that is running in the background uh and so on and so forth the thing that i have to do before i run this app is again create a virtual like environment uh as we did like last time so for that again for mac uh Folks, you need to do this. Hold on. Let me copy paste this. Here, you need to run like these commands. Uh, for Windows, folks, you can just like follow along with what I'm trying to do here. Uh, so first, let me change directory to this. Uh, oh, uh, hold on, hold on. Make sure <laughs> uh, you have the right like terminal. I for some reason, PowerShell doesn't work. Uh, command prompt, prompt works better. Uh, on Mac, I think it's terminals work better. Anyway. Right. What, what the heck is PowerShell? It's a, I don't know, it's a- Something to avoid, it sounds like. I just, no, it is, it is I, good. I only know it's about just, the terminal. It doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't work like with VS Code, but it's generally a good shell to like work with if you're using a Linux system and so on and so forth. But you still uh, have to open a terminal to use it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, all right, I gotcha. Yeah. So, all right. I was trying to create a virtual environment. All right, Python. So this is for like, what I'm typing here is for like the Windows folks. I've already sent you the code for the Mac folks. Uh, minus M V E N V dot, then whatever your virtual environment name is, which is usually V E N V. Uh, right. That will create the virtual environment in a bit. My laptop today is also super slow. I should like stop my video there, just in case it crashes like last time. All right, so once that is done, we need to activate like uh, the virtual environment. For that, I will say dot v e n v uh, forward slash uh, scripts forward slash wait dot bat. Right. So now we have that. And in requirements.txt, as of now, I just have like Flask and Python uh, dot env that we used from last time. Uh, okay, the first thing that I want to do is like add a git ignore file. Uh, not git. Uh, and ask it not to push my .env file and not to push my virtual environment and to get up, right? That's done. Uh, so let me get a few more like apps that we would require. Uh, we might require uh, IPy kernel. I will, I will, Tell you why we need these. Uh, if you guys are not familiar with IPy kernel, it's essentially it lets you convert your uh, Python to a Jupyter notebook and lets you run uh, here. I will tell you why we need this. We need Torch because most of the things on Hugging Face require Torch and Pillow. Like these two libraries are from there. Uh, we also need like Transformers a library from Hugging Face and OpenAI. This should do. Uh, 
for now. Uh, let me save this. Install minus r. Txt. So if I type this pip install minus r requirements dot txt, it will start installing all the files I just requested it to install. Right. Uh, in the meantime, no, I can't do in the meantime. <laughs> I have to let it uh, run. But okay, uh, maybe I can do in the meantime. Uh, what I'll do is like I'll walk you guys through what will eventually happen with the code that I have like pre-coded. I will code this like one by one, but you'll get the idea. Uh, so if I if you remember the web app that I showed, uh, it it has a text field where I can put the image in and that is sent to my server. The way it is sent is when, if you remember the presentation from last time, there are different kinds of uh, HTTP like sort of requests that we do. Uh, when I send a data, it is usually a post request request. All right. So I say that it's a post request and then I am doing a bunch of stuff to handle the file. I will get into what that stuff is. Uh, on the HTML side in templates. Uh, oh man, the, the, the HTML has like uh, the form that we create, right? Like this is what the form is. It will have a text box where I can put the image in. There's a submit button for me to submit the button. And then what I'm saying is that if you get the image back from the server, display it there along with the caption. Otherwise, just display the waiting for the image to process. And on the right hand side, uh, I have the P5JS like canvas, which is with this div, uh, div canvas.id. And below that, I have two buttons, one for start and one for stop. This is the like basic like HTML setup that we have uh, for the, uh, like for the web, like basic web page. And the other thing that you see here, the like class and all of these like form control or like why we have row and column and so on and so forth, it is because that is the way we would do it using Bootstrap, if you remember from last time. Uh, just go to examples or go to the docs and you'll get the HTML code for how to do like whatever element that you want to add. For example, if I want to have a input group, it would give me the code to how to create a form like this with all the relevant like sort of classes so that it looks clean and neat. Uh, similarly, if I want just the image to be displayed, uh, hold on, it was somewhere here. Image that it will give me like 10 different ways of displaying images uh, along with the alt text and so on and so forth. Uh, but yeah, that that is what that HTML page was. Uh, essentially, like one on the it divides the page into two halves. On the left, you have image and the submit button, on the right, you have the P5JS canvas. The base is also similar to what we saw from last time. It just has a nav bar, which lets you like navigate on the website again, coming from bootstrap and it has a bunch of like uh, stuff that I talked about from last time. If a certain page is active, it sends this active. If not, it, it doesn't so that like we have a swap in the nav bar and then we have like Jenga template, which says block content and end block. And I'm using that to write your milestone and about page. So I literally have to say extends whatever the base template is. And then within those blocks, I add the code for that particular page. All of this is hopefully not new because we've done this from last time. Uh, now, hopefully the things have installed. Are you serious? Okay, it is running super slow. It is still installing. I'm not sure what to do. I should have installed these like libraries beforehand. Now that I'm thinking, oh, finally, yes. No, it's yeah, it's just keep yeah. Wait a second. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> now, if I say, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. So, I, now I need to set up my .env file. 
we rename this, you also need to rename .env, like remove the examples so that there's a .env file. Uh, in app, I'm already loading this .env file, so you're good to go. So let's run this. Run. Oh. That's good. All right. All right. So this is what the website currently looks like. It should be a blank screen. It's still loading though. Hold on. It should still display the about and milestone two page. But again, it's running super slow. Oh. There's apparently an error. Static folder static. Uh, all right. Sort of style example, just name it to style. Is your is your machine plugged in just as a yeah, it is plugged in. Okay. Yeah, it yeah, that it wasn't finding so if if you saw like the prompts that it was giving, so it said get CSS, it's uh, style.css and it said like HTTP 404. So it was trying to find the uh, style.css when it didn't exist. So I realized I had named it like style example.css, just renamed it to style.css and it should work. Uh, there, this is the base like sort of web page. Like, forget this because we have nothing on milestone one, but it you have the base like sort of app and you can add like whatever in there eventually. Now, uh, before I like do uh, or show you how to build the app further, what I will do is like create a new folder, new file called a uh, I don't know, call it whatever you want, but I will call it, call it like hugging face or hug face. Or, hmm. Hug face is fine. Dot uh, I P Y N B. Make sure you have the same like extension. There's like I P Y N B. So what this will do is it will let you create a Jupyter notebook that you can test your code with before you integrate it into the app. So I will be using this Jupyter notebook to show you how the API callings work from hugging face and so on and so forth. So when you open this for the first time, make sure you have the kernel selected to the Python environment. This one, this one, this one, this one. Yeah, ah, all right, great. What's happening? I don't see this environment. This is change. Uh, okay. So it seems my interpreter will be wrong. Scripts. So what is happening here is that it is running like the Python outside uh, my, uh, what do you call virtual environment. So for that, I need to like fix it and make it run uh, using my virtual environment, which is inside here. So in the virtual environment, there should be a Python folder, python.exe there. Hmm. I did my copy the path from there. Uh, So what what's the goal you're trying to accomplish at this moment, just in kind of a, a, at a higher level? Uh, I'm just trying to get this to like sort of run uh, using the this Python version. That's about that's about it. Sounds like coding in Python to me. Yeah, <laughs> because it is like uh, using a different like Python version uh, than I would like it to. So this is a common like sort of thing that might happen when you are running this as well. So make sure you have like the the Python that is running from your like sort of version and then from elsewhere. So the way that you do that is what I'm showing also. So this is like live uh, error handling. 
Python dot exe. All right. Now it says like 3.2 dot VNB. I don't know if you guys were like this is being recorded, so you will see it in any case in the recording. It didn't say dot PNV earlier. Now it does. So now my Python is running from the right place. Anyway, now going back to this. If I say select kernel, for God's sake. Python environment. Oh, there. Now now it shows me dot VNV. Yes. Yes, finally. <laughs> Sorry for that, like, uh, what do you call it? Troubleshooting. Anyway, so hopefully you guys are all like set up in a similar place and you can like run Python code easily now. We can easily do this on, uh, what do you call, Google Colab as well, but it's easier to run like Python with everything that I have set up here. So let's do it from here. All right, for, uh, if you go to Hugging Face, for example, uh yeah and models the model that i am trying to use is uh image to text model so if i go to image to text and i think i use salesforce if i remember correctly uh this is the image to text model that i want to use there are two ways that you can use one is through something called as inference api which i do not recommend because this might not work like most of the times and like so what this this does is that like the salesforce folks have hosted this on uh hugging face and they have created this like endpoint through which you can interact with the model uh and you can interact with the model this way also but the thing is like any day they might decide that they will take down this uh, model from the inference API and then your app will stop working. So instead of that, what I recommend using doing is uh, using it through the transformers library. Uh, and this is what the code is. So it, it, we will be using pipelines. Uh, it will abstract away like most of the codes that we have here. What this does is that we will import this library and from that we just have to call this pipe and we, our model is good to go. The only like thing you need to keep in mind when we are using uh, models through pipeline is that it will download the model on your desktop or, or like on your like personal like sort of computer. Uh, so it is okay. The point is that it is essential that you don't push your virtual environments because the files are going to get big. Uh, all right, so we can just like copy this code, which is essentially this, and then I can paste it here. Uh, hold on. And then move this down to the next like sort of cell. Right. Uh what I'm trying to do here is that I've created this like pipe, which is like pipeline of so on and so forth. So now if I say uh pipe, I first of all I don't like I don't like the names of these like things. So I would generally give it a bit more descriptive name because image to text and this code pipe. So this is the pipeline for image to text, right? Now I'm, I want the text essentially, but I don't know what the text looks like. So let me just like call image to text like pipe, right? And provide a URL of an image that I want to use. For that, I will just, uh, use an image that I have. For example, let me use this abstract color and just put it in the folder. I can send you this pic also. Just a second. Wait, hold on, let me send this pic also. Here, you can use the same image that I'm using. Uh, in pass, AI for DM, Jenny, I have, and I've just like put the folder, like put this image file in the base, like sort of folder. So what I can do here is I can say uh, abstract because that's the name. Abstract colors dot JPG. It's right there. I don't need to specify the entire URL for where this uh, image is. And let me print text to see what is happening. All right. Uh, Okay, okay, cool. One important step 
that I forgot is like, yeah, this is the code. This code will work. But the thing is, you will need your uh, hugging face API key. Uh, if you guys haven't already, again, you can create your API key from here, right? Get that API key and put it in your .env file. Uh, for example, like go to .env, like there's a HF token, right? Just put your API key in there. Uh, this is free, so just create your own API key. Don't use mine. Uh, there. All right. And you went and through such lengths to not show us your key, but here it is. I'm I'm showing hugging face key. Which is oh, this fine. is the hugging face key. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I thought this was the opening eye. No, 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 no. Yeah, I, yeah, I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, it's hugging face, obviously. <laughs> I I won't show the opening eye key. Uh, all right. But like this is since this is the first time I'm showing where to put the token key. Uh, create your own. All right, so for that, I also need, if you remember from last time, I need this library from .env, load.env, and I need to create, I need to load those environmental variables before I run stuff. So, all right, if you haven't used Jupyter Notebook before, you run it like one cell at a time. So I can't just like directly run this. I have to like run one after the other. So this will import my libraries, then I will set my environmental variables, and now I will call this like app, uh or this function not a function yet but a bunch of like lines that will give me something all right so as you can see i've run the salesforce app it is that easy like if you guys are following it is this simple like you just have to copy the code put it on your like app and your whatever model that you're trying to work with it will just work uh that's how simple it is to use like models from our uh so okay so the output that I want that I got from this is this. It says generated text, painting of a blue and green watercolor background with white border. All right. So since I just want the text, what I can do, and I can see that this is inside a list. So I will say first go to the first element inside the list, and then I get the dictionary object. Uh, in that, I will say get me what is that. Yeah. Yeah, generated text here. Yeah. So now if I print text, it will just directly give me the text rather than giving me it in a giving it to me in an object. Uh, all right, let's see. It it's going to give me the same like sort of caption. It won't change the caption, but you see, like the output is cleaner now. Painting of a blue and green, white color, watercolor, whatever. Uh, you can test with whatever image you have, but yeah. That's how simple it is to use like hugging face model. All right, let's move. Let's use this as a prompt to the OpenAI like sort of library that I that I was that I was showing earlier. Uh, I mean, I, was, for, I just wanted to point out you have about twenty five minutes. All right, yeah, that's why that's why I'm showing like both the libraries before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want just want to let you know. That's all. Yes. All right. So okay, hold on. Any questions on using hugging face models? It literally is like it gives you the code and it's super easy to use. Uh, anyway, all right. So I'm assuming there are no questions. Now, the next deal that I want to do is like use this as a prompt to generate a story, right? For that, I am using uh, OpenAI uh, sort of thing. And in that, again, if I go to my name uh, and go to API reference. Hmm. Right, it walks you through how to do, like how to call any thing from OpenAI. So the first thing that we need to do is like pip install OpenAI. If you remember, we've already done that through the requirements.txt. We've already uh, installed the OpenAI like sort of library. We also in, installed Transformers library, which I just used. We used ipykernel to run like this file. I think most of these like, libraries now make sense to you. Oh, by the way, like the hugging face in the background requires torch and pillow. That's why we use this. So otherwise this model wouldn't have run if I didn't have like torch and pillow there. Just have those library. It, it will come in handy. All right. So we've already done that. Uh, we need 
an API key. I've shown you how to create an API key or get your own API key from wherever you have. Uh, we don't need most of that. Hold on. Let me just go to chat because it's easier. Here. So this is the code that I want. It's like from OpenAI, I create OpenAI from, and then I create a client, create a connection between that OpenAI, and then I give it a text completion task uh, where I specify like what model to use. There are a bunch of like different models that you can run. Hold on, it was here. List of models, show, show me the list of models. Oh man, okay, docs maybe. It's not in API, but it should be in docs. Yeah, there. So we have these many models in OpenAI and you're free to use whatever. I just, since it is irrelevant for the task that I am doing, I just went with chat GPT like uh, 4.0. Uh, you can see that max. Do they code. cost more to use? Like, does uh, GPT four cost more via yeah. the API? Like, is I it might, but it's really in sense. I think I'm not sure though, but I need to check. That. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I was just curious. I, like, it just feels like there's there's it some trade off here. Though. Yeah, it yeah. makes sense though. Like, I would expect it to cost less or more, but hmm, I need to check that though. Yeah. Uh, I because yeah, I don't but, like I know some folks for their pipelines like use uh, lower fidel fidelity models like while they're doing like like testing with lots yeah. and lots and lots of queries and then when they think they have everything you know like it's okay then they 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 bump up to the more expensive one I, th I, I think anyway that yeah anyway I think so too hold on we don't here, need here, to get here, here, here. i don't need it oh yeah it does cost yeah there, 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 there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there you so go you're right yeah, you're that right. makes sense yeah yeah so right. this, anyway okay <laughs> there are you guys don't really need to worry about it but i was just thinking more about the context of using this like yourself or for work or something like that that is a thing that you would kind of right keep in mind and like see mind, okay yeah. yeah because it's it does say like 3.5 turbo is like faster and expensive model so pick and choose the right like model for you all right, going back to uh, the API reference, I am trying to create a chat completion, chat model here. Uh, this is essentially the code that we need and nothing more. Uh, so let me just like write this code like one line at a time. Or like I just like copy it, right? forget writing stuff. You can, you can go to this like page also and copy the code from there, uh, right? So the first thing that we need is this uh, import libraries. So there I have imported the library. Let me run the cell again. Uh, now for a brief minute, I will stop sharing my screen so that I can put my API key and then get back. Uh, uh, I've shown you guys where to put the API key. Just put the right API key there. Uh, Right. Right. We are back. All right. Uh, so I've put the API key. Now I'll run the load. So the API key is also loaded. The next thing that I have is I need to copy a bunch of like other functions from what do you call it? Hugging mean, face website. Where did that website go? Up there. All right, let's go. This. Here. Oh, I think I forgot one line of code there. I need this also. Right, I'm creating a new client, right? And then I'm calling completion task. I am saying client chat dot completion create, and I specify the model, and then I just like send what I need to do. Right now, what this is doing is it says like hello, so it will respond with a hello. I don't want that because I already have like certain certain thing that I have set up. Uh, in the role, 
in the system like sort of i've shown you what system like role is so i need to tell what i expect the chat gpt to do as a as i don't know like as a expert like storyteller so for this i use this prompt uh the app that i showed you i can put this here as well uh here this is the prompt that i'm using you're an expert short storyteller using a simple narrative you generate story in less than 100 words based on given based on a given scenario so this is the instructions that i give the chat api like the open api ugh, chat gpt model like it's gpt4 model uh all right now this is messages uh i don't want the message to be like this this let me break this down i need to set like temperature also for this let me set temperature so that i don't get variability in i mean, no, you have a hand up oh really okay yes yes yeah i have a quick question uh, under yes. if where do I want to put like context? Uh, I thought like where do I put like background information or anything that's like knowledge based, like previous PDFs or just oh, no, um... oh, okay. So when we talk about like having a knowledge base, like a PDF and so on and so forth, we get it into get into the territory of rags, uh, something called a retrieval augmented generation. That's milestone two. I'm not showing that right now, and we'll be using Langchain for that. Uh, hold on. <laughs> uh, it, it is a bit more complicated than you would imagine, but if you want to play around uh, for like right now, what you can do is like, uh, okay, we don't give you, if you have your own like sort of account, uh, you go to playgrounds and you can go to assistance, right? and create a new assistant with the PDF file and you can chat with the assistant. Assistance is a separate like sort of API, uh, which comes with its own like sort of works, which we are not covering here. Right now we're just using the chat like sort of version of it, uh, which is simpler, but hold on until milestone two, we will go over like how to include PDF files also. It, it's when an entirely different process though. When you're in that, when you're putting the role in, saying like you are an expert storyteller, can yeah. you like context in there, like saying like you are a expert? As long as, yeah, as long as it's just text, you can put like how this can be however long it, as you want. It can okay. be like paragraphs long also, not PDFs as of now, just okay. not PDFs or like any Word document. We'll get to PDFs and Word documents like later in, in 15 more days. But good question though. Uh, all right. Uh, where was I? What was I trying to do? Uh, all right, hold on. I have the model, I have the temperature. I want to set the max like uh, completion tokens to a few because I don't want to give like thousand word uh, stories in my case uh and messages i have said messages all right now let me since messages is what is where the like the back and forth conversation happens what i want to do is like i want to create like a new like i want to create this messages like sort of list outside so i can call this like message list and for now just copy this There, you'll see why this is needed. All right. And here I will just say, instead of putting that there, I will just say message list. Right. And when I'm calling the function out, I will say, I will have to, first of all, uh, message list. Let's go list dot append uh, text that I'm getting from here. 
uh in the form okay hold on hold on, hold on. so as you can see like uh the way like the chat like sort of interface works is that i need to specify the role and then i need to say like you are a system or role you are a chooser so on and so forth. there are only three like sort of roles that any of these like chat interface can take either a system either a user or ai right uh i want to query the model so i am the user so the way this will work is that in the message list uh I will copy this. This is easier. Let me create like message equal to this. Uh, and instead of scenario, I'll just put text here. So this is in the format that the model is expecting it to. So message, I am the role. This is the content. Right now, let me just append this to my list. Message right and now i can make a query to it is is this clear so like this is the format that the model is expecting like role system and then content so now if i'm querying for a story i would have to specify a role that i am a user and then my query is content and text the text is coming from my previous model which is essentially like painting of a blue green watercolor background and so on and so forth all right uh now in the uh, let's say out message. And let me go back to the oh man. To open API. API reference. This website is also super slow, or I don't know, it's like running slow for me. Uh, go to chat, and this is what I want. Completion dot choice dot zero message. Message uh, and let me just print out message. Right. Huh. What's up? Connection error, okay. Did I not run it? Dot dot in me. There. Nope, okay. This is a new error that I need to see. Hmm. I'm not sure what's happening. Strange, hold on, let me see what's the error. From OpenAI, completion that create. Yeah, this is what I'm trying to do. And then print. Isn't this exactly what I'm trying to do here? Yeah. Why do I have a connection either? Okay. I have no clue what's happening. Any anyone figured this out by any chance? Yeah, I I've I've been trying to follow. I I don't have any input. Hmm. I, I honestly I have no clue what's happening. 
because this is exactly what they had and it was working I don't, I don't understand why you're you're getting a I mean it's a blank exception thrown. Yeah, it is trying it is I don't know what the error is. API connection error. It seems like my API key is not working. Okay. Let me do this once more. Okay. Let me like regenerate like a new API key and try this. Yeah, yeah. That. Good idea. yeah. just a second. Uh you can also try if you can get rid of any of that code uh, that's in there to make it simpler. That would be a good. Uh, thing. I don't know what that would look like though, honestly. No clue either. All right, I'm creating a new API key. This will take a bit more time. Uh, or I have generated a new API key. That would be longer. All right, like, okay, this is a chance for me to show you. I will generate a new API key after this, so you won't be able to use mine in any case. So, again, so if I say preview, like, this is the API, like, key thing that I have set up. Uh, and I put my six, six thing here. Uh, so it will show the API key that is for my project, All right? Oh my God, there. All right. Let me see if this API key works. And in dot env, I will replace that. Let's see. Everything works up until there, and then like if OpenAI is having issues creating stuff. Nope. Literally have to see what this error is because I'm seeing this for the first time. This, uh, we have like five minutes left. If, if you can figure this out quickly, there's, there's no pressure. Again, you can figure it out and finish the recording. If that, if that's helpful. Uh, yeah, yeah. That, that should help. Do you want to just stop the recording now? Let folks go and then we'll post when, when you've got it sussed out. Yeah, yeah. Like it really seems uh, an issue with the way I'm doing the API calling. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm. Well, how about how about we? Yeah. I'll oh, stop. Uh, Vishnavi, do you still have a question, or is that your hand from earlier? Uh, hey Manoj, I had yeah. this error before when I yeah. was trying to work with ChatGPT. Uh, wait, basically, it I just took like thirty minutes and I came back and it worked somehow. <laughs> Oh just man! <laughs> so right. I just like I was so annoyed. I just left it, and then it came back, and I refreshed everything, and it started working. <laughs> yeah. Great. So Great. oh, it could be one of a hand of of lots of issues. It looks like this is a catch-all. Yeah. Yeah. It it seems yeah. It it really is like it's not able to make an API call. To so some firewall is maybe because I'm screen sharing and like showing this here. Like oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Well uh, let's uh let's wrap things up on here then. Uh and yeah. then you can get off the team's call and see if that helps. Are there any other follow-up questions? I haven't okay, shown but... how this is integrated into the model. Do, do, do you just I mean again, do you just want to post a remainder of a video? Uh, or you want yeah, to try to do will... something in the next couple of minutes? No, no, no. I will record a new okay. video and just like do a code like run through of the, uh, what do you call it? The already existing code base and that should be good. 
Let's face it. So Minoja and I have also determined that with what we've added to the class this year, that there really needs to be a lab, a separate lab for us oh, to yeah. to do this sort of weekly instead of uh in an hour and 20 minutes sometimes as we're we're trying to do so we we recognize this is a little little crunched um but um Manoj, you could just take a little bit more time uh and, and feel less crunched um and uh everybody good luck with get preparing for your presentation on on wednesday again don't stress about it too much just make sure you've got that video and you can come up and, and talk about your work uh coherently for a few minutes just in terms of the story about what you built um and how you wound up where where you wound up what were the challenges that you faced how'd you overcome them if you did um overcoming it could mean just giving up and doing something else um but uh really just we want to hear your 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 about your process and 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 why you got the result that you did um and the video with showing off the result so looking forward to it we'll be all in person on wednesday and we'll try just to use uh everybody's personal laptops uh, so just please come and 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 have your your laptop charged. If you need to just send us slides or something, that's fine too. Just let us know. Um, cool. Uh, actually, let's just make it uniform. If you need to send slides, send a link to Manoj or, or Faust Manoj instead of to some to us and me and some to him. Um, all right. I will see you all on Wednesday. I uh, hope you have a good good Monday and hope everyone's uh, okay after the storm. We actually didn't get to check in about that. Um, but, uh, I myself had lots of water in my house. It was, uh, it's been a really interesting week, actually. Um, also got stranded in East Georgia, uh, without any gasoline. That was also an interesting experience. Um, <laughs> but we'll talk about it later. All right. Everybody have a good day. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. Bye.